So now we need to find out the solution for this one so that finally we can arrive at the amplitude of the vibration. So how to find out this one and if you observe uh, you know this is exactly like in uh, as like in the free vibration except this force component. So this equation is depending on the nature of the force that we apply to the system. So now I will consider the case one. In the case one I will take the force as a constant one. That means so this is f of t equal to f not simply f not this is a constant one. So if I draw a graph between the force and the time. So this force is not varying with respect to time but instead it is just a constant along this one f not. So this force is a constant here with respect to the time t. So in this in that case so I will assume I will assume the displacement, initial displacement. So particular solution here I am considering particular solution x of t equal to x naught where x naught is I have assumed and this is a constant value because here the applied force is a constant value. So f naught is a given value and we need to find out the x naught and uh, when we derive this equation of motion we have already seen that the particular solution and as well as the homogeneous solution both should satisfy the differential equation individually and if you combine these two solutions even in that case also they should satisfy the given differential equation. So when, when we say that these two solutions should satisfy the equation individually then I will substitute this, this equation in the equation number 1. So what happens? So here the double differentiation of the xp is a 0 because this is the constant value x0 and uh, here x double dot also x double dot also 0. So if I substitute these values in this one the m into x double dot becomes 0 and the c into x dot also becomes 0 and only we left with the k into x but uh, what is the x? x is the x0. So here it becomes k into x0 equal to f of t that is nothing but a constant value f naught. So this is the one and uh, here we know k value and uh, f naught value. So here we can write uh, x naught equal to f naught by k. So this is the amplitude value and if I substitute this value in this equation then uh, we will get the x p of t that this is nothing but a particular solution for this differential equation. And what is the homogeneous solution we have already derived. So the homogeneous solution is simply you know if you put 0 here instead of f then this is the homogene homogeneous equation and the solution for this differential equation will become the homogeneous solution. So what that one is so this is the solution for the homogeneous equation homogeneous equation part. So in this equation everything is known except this uh, amplitude a and the phase angle phi. So how to find out this amplitude a and the phase angle phi? So for a given initial values we can substitute all other values so that uh, you can find out the amplitude a and the phase angle phi. And here if you observe this is the omega d that means the natural frequency or the radius I mean, uh, angular velocity for the damped system. And uh, here we know that uh, omega d equal to omega n into square root of 1 minus xi square. So that we need to remember here. Otherwise, we may commit any mistake. And what is the total solution? The total solution xt equal to xh plus xp. So in this way, we need to find out the total solution. And if you observe the total solution, for example, here if I write the total solution, this is the f naught by k. So this is the total solution T. So that that equal to XH that means homogeneous solution plus particular solution. Here if you observe when the time increases or as you know go along the time axis this one is you know uh, reducing exponentially. So that means after certain period of time this first part is dying down. But where the second part is remains constant. 
so we need to remember this you now uh, whenever in the problem if they state that amplitude of the steady state equation so when they state the steady state what does it mean steady state means any parameter or in for example in this particular case the amplitude variation with respect to time is not changing here steady state so with respect to time it's not changing so that means after after reaching particular value this this first term is automatically becoming zero it's approximately zero it's a tending to zero so we can neglect this one and we have only this term so what is the amplitude at the steady state st that is nothing but f not by k so this formula is very much important because this is the one where we are really interested in in this force of vibration